Okay, remember guys, this is for educational purposes. Ooh! Did you have a weird dream when you were a kid? I had clown dreams. The house that I grew up in had like a bay window at the back so you could see into the woods. And I had a recurring dream that a clown would come out of the woods and like come towards my house and then I would always wake up. But yeah, it very scary. I, I really don't love. So let's talk about gems so we don't have to think about that. Not sapphire, topaz, or aquamarine. This blue stone is a completely different thing. A completely different thing. It makes me feel like maybe it's a little bit more unique of a stone, but let's dive in and see. Ooh, oh, it's so pretty. So when crystals are in a crystal form, it gives a hint to their identity. When you have things like beryl or aquamarine, you often see a hexagonal prism with pinacoid tops. With sapphire, you'll often see a bipyramidal crystal. This is more of a tabular bladed crystal. It has this like serrated look to it, which is indicative of crystals in the triclinic crystal system. So from the color and from the shape, I know that this is kyanite. So kyanite is an aluminum silicate. It forms in the triclinic crystal system, which is the most disorderly crystal system. And so what happens is you have a lot of different cool directional and optical and physical properties that come out in these stones. And kyanite has a few of those. The pearly luster is very evident on this one. Pearly luster is common along cleavage planes. You can see as I rock it back and forth, the cleavage planes, which is, is really cool. It looks very splintery. This specimen looks like specimens from Minas Gerais, Brazil, which is a popular locality where you have these bladed crystals embedded in quartz. Kyanite's also found in a lot of places throughout the world, Madagascar, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, Austria, the United States, like Connecticut, Georgia, Massachusetts. Kyanite comes from the word kyanos, meaning deep blue. The French spelling was also used with a C-C-Y-A-N. Think of the word cyan or blue. Another name for it is disthene, from the Greek meaning two strengths. And the reason for that is due to a special property that it has, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Oh my goodness, oh this is pretty. So we have a bunch of different varieties of kyanite in different forms. So kyanite actually was used mostly for industrial purposes and was found typically as mineral specimens up until the 1990s where in Nepal they found really gemmy, facetable material. Kyanite gets its blue color from titanium and iron. Sometimes chromium can play a part, but it can also be found in other colors, in pink and yellow, orange, green. We have some fun orange and green ones here. The green is colored by vanadium, the orange is colored by manganese. It's it's very interesting how you can get different colors in the same material. So that's a property called allochromatic. So Al2SiO5 is the chemical formula for kyanite. When pure, it's going to be colorless, but when you add impurities, you can get different colors. So the interesting thing about having all of this faceted material is kyanite is notoriously difficult to facet. So remember we talked about disthene or two strengths. That comes from a property that kyanite possesses called directional hardness. And what that means is that there are different directions in the crystal structure that have different hardnesses, and that's due to the atomic bonds, the strength of the bonds is not equal in all directions of the crystal. With a lot of gems, you'll find a little bit of variation in the hardness in different directions, but with kyanite, you have a vast difference. Along the C-axis, you can have a hardness of about four to five, but across the C-axis, the hardness is anywhere from about six to seven and a half. Along with the cleavage planes, that is an added level of difficulty. So imagine what a lapidary has to think about when fastening kyanite, it takes a lot of mathematics and skill. Sometimes you can see color change kyanite, which is greenish blue in daylight to purple and incandescent. And sometimes when cut in cabochon, kyanite can show chatoyancy. Chatoyant meaning 
cat's eye. So you can see a band across the stone due to parallel layers of inclusions. And that is one of the things that I immediately noticed in this beaded necklace because some of these, I think, are slightly chatoyant. So what we're about to do right now are called destructive tests. Destructive meaning they destruct the gems. So don't try this at home if you don't want to harm your gems in any way, but they're good to do if you're trying to test things like hardness or to see fracture. We have a bag of kyanite. Oh, look at it. A scratch test is something that is used to test hardness. And so you take a material of a known hardness and scratch it with enough pressure so as to not break it to see if it scratches the surface of the material. So we are going to use a steel nail. The hardness of this is six and a half. And so that falls roughly between the two major ends of the spectrum for kyanite's hardness. So when I scratch it, in this direction, along the C-axis, you can see ooh, it certainly did scratch, which I don't usually like scratching gemstones, but actually it's kind of fun. You can hear it too. Okay, so let's go along the short end. You get nothing, which is crazy. It's just, I'm just scratching it perpendicular to, to the other direction. There's actually resistance when I apply pressure on this short end, and it is making no marks. That is crazy. Another way to indicate what a material might be is by something called its fractures. This is the way that a gem breaks. A common one is called conchoidal. Think of like when glass breaks, you have these concentric kind of shell looking like breaks. They're granular or sugary looking fracture, hackley fracture. Kyanite has what's called splintery fracture. So when you break it, it looks like splinters. So we are going to break some kyanite to show you splintery fracture. Okay, remember guys, this is for educational purposes. Don't try this at home unless you want to ruin your kyanite, which generally I would not suggest. Ooh, that was a good one. Oh my goodness. A chunk of pieces flew out from this little divot in here, and it breaks kind of like a piece of wood. It should look familiar like that. And so you can see a lot of particles just like spewed out like pieces of tiny wood. So if you see a blue stone of this color and this splintery fracture, it is diagnostic of kyanite. This is one of my favorite aspects of kyanite. I think it is so interesting. And we have two gems to show you. One is silimonite. This is actually a cat's eye silimonite. And this is a gem called andalusite. So kyanite, silimonite, and andalusite are polymorphs. And what that means is they all share the same chemical composition, Al2SiO5, but they form in different forms. Kyanite, as we've mentioned, is part of the triclinic system. Silimonite and andalusite are parts of an entirely different crystal system altogether. They're orthorhombic. What you have here is differences in their formation. These usually form in metamorphic environments. So all of these form generally in the same manner, but with different levels of pressure and temperature. Kyanite is usually a low temperature, high pressure environment. Silimonite is a high pressure, high temperature environment. And Andalusite is a low pressure, low temperature environment. And when you find them in the rock, it indicates to you what has happened to that rock in its lifespan. So some other fun facts, kyanite is often used for industrial purposes. It has heat resistant properties. So it's used in ceramics, porcelain, insulating bricks, and other industrial materials. A lot of people ascribe a lot of metaphysical properties to kyanite. I don't really know that much about that stuff, but I have read that it facilitates dream recall. I'm gonna hold this one in my hand. I'm gonna close my eyes. Can you see those clowns coming out? Oh my God. Oh, I don't want to see the clowns, but I actually do. Oh, it was always slow motion. I always knew it was coming. I had to figure out how to hide before I got 
attacked. I, ugh. I would rather not recall that dream. Let's recall more pleasant dreams. Okay, so I want you to take a closer look at this crystal, even though it recalled some bad dreams for me. It's so beautiful how it's formed, the kind of spiky nature. The blue is a really pretty blue. I hope that you can appreciate kyanite for all of its different properties. I wouldn't call kyanite the most popular gemstone, but as we've talked about here, there are so many interesting aspects to this relatively unknown stone. We have cool directional properties, physical properties, color properties, and there's so much to learn. We have a really cool new website, gemstones.com, which is a one-stop destination for all your gem knowledge. We'll put the link in the description and you guys can go there. There are videos and articles, news updates, and you can learn about any gemstone that you have questions about. Thanks for joining us today. What other interesting gemstones would you like to learn about? Let us know down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching.